Welcome to the Daily Update, where I'll go over the action in the market for Friday, November 8th, and we'll see how things look for Monday, November 11th. Well, had another update, not quite as strong. Didn't see as much of an improvement with some of our indicators, but they are pretty much turning positive. We could be looking overbought. Now, I said that before Friday's session, but we're looking at good momentum. However, for Monday, there's two things that will be happening. The bond market will be closed for Veterans Day, and there's no economic reports that are coming out. And a third thing that I just thought about is we have pretty negative seasonality for Monday. So if we see some kind of a decline in Monday's session, we'll just be watching it to see is this profit taking after a really nice run. This is one of the best weeks, if not the best week after an election that the stock market has ever had. So it would not really be a surprise for folks to lock in some profits by doing some selling. And then we'll be watching that to see, is it picking up steam? Is it starting a decline? Is it just looking like a normal pullback? If that even happens. Now, a lot of what was happening this past week is just FOMO, the fear of missing out. The market seemed to really like, they'd already been pr pricing in that uh, a Trump victory seemed to be what they thought was going to happen. And now that it looks like, at least at this point, we're still not official yet, but with the Congress, the Senate seems to be Republican, and it's it's looking like the House will remain Republican. Now, the market usually doesn't like that. They like a divided Congress, but there's a lot of talk about different changes that could happen, and the market seems to like those, at least to this point. But now that the emotional part is kind of passing and people are dealing with the reality part, we'll have to see what's the market going to do. But we're also in a, a time of positive seasonality. Now, Monday, yeah, for that day, it's not looking very good necessarily. But when you look at November, December, January, and even up till about April of 2025, we do have for the most part, positive seasonality. The market tends to do well after the election is over. We'll just see. We can always deviate from that at any time. But for right now, things are looking quite positive, but possibly a little overextended in the short term and somewhat even in the intermediate term. Please feel free to check out the SPX Investing Program. It's up, it's going, it's free until the end of 2024. There's a link that will take you to the website or to a video that talks more about the program. One benefit is you get access to the videos as soon as they are available. The daily video is the real foundation of the analysis that I do. Now that it's the weekend, I'll be, pre be preparing the outside videos, but they're all meant to tie into the daily video. Okay, so right at the open, we we're pretty much flat. And... If there was a day that it was like, okay, maybe we'll see things sideways to slightly down, it Friday looked like it could have been it. Well, we ended up going higher, but we didn't see as much strength as we saw earlier in the week. So we did have a higher open. We were flat, but then we immediately went up after that. And that could have been some leftover reaction to the Fed cutting rates earlier in the week. And then prices were able to climb above R1 at 59.89. As the day went on, we got above 6,000. Now, we didn't close above 6,000, but we got up to R2, which was at 6,005. And then we drifted lower going into the close below F2. So we got above their intraday, but we didn't close above 6,000. We were up 0.38%, and volume is still above average. Now, it's dropping down. It's not as high as what we saw, but it is staying rather healthy. We are positive in the short, intermediate, and long term. Looking potentially overextended to the upside in the short term and probably in the intermediate term. Long term, we're still looking solid. The market really likes what's happening with inflation. Now, in the upcoming week, we're going to get CPI, PPI, retail sales. Those are some big economic reports. And so that could change the scenario a little bit. And of course, this past week, the Fed cut, came in and cut interest rates, and we're seeing the 10-year yield coming down, and the market is liking that. The dollar is still staying pretty strong, but the market is more fixated on what's happening with interest rates. But at the same time, 
Not only do we have everything that's being talked about with the U.S. election and that things are not necessarily final at this point, because it hasn't been ratified, that can take a little bit of time for that to happen. There's geopolitical things going on that could escalate and could have an impact on the markets. Okay, so some comments. The S&P did get above 6,000, the NASDAQ 100. The NASDAQ itself, mid-caps, and the Dow, which got above 44,000, they all set new all-time highs. So we saw repeated all-time highs across multiple indexes. The small caps had a good day, but they're not quite at setting an all-time high yet. We want to keep an eye on what's going on in the Middle East. Oil really hasn't been moving all that much. We're between the 70 and 71 level there. And we have a pretty long list here in the short term. When you look at the VIX, it's really been coming down. Just a few days ago, we were well above 20, and that was causing us some concern. We're really dropping with the VIX. So I use an RSI. I'll show you that chart. And it may have come down a little too fast. Also, the rate of change going back five days, that continues to be extreme. That's the second day that the rate of change has been on the list. But then we have the usual ones that we see anytime we have any kind of an upward or downward move. The Stoke RSI, Williams Percent R, CCI 14 and 20, Stochastics. The Force Index, which usually doesn't stay on this list for very long. It's been on there for a couple of days now. Also, the Boom Indicator. We're getting far away from that 20-period moving average. And the short-term RSI based on nine periods. And somewhat of a list here in the intermediate term with the CMB composite, the standard deviations chart, we're still in the plus three channel. So that means that we're a little extended. But we can stay there for a while when we're seeing good momentum. The Arun indicator declined slightly, but it's still extreme. The Sean Trend meter, the percent B. This is the third day now that the percent B shows that we've closed above the upper Bollinger Band. And I'll, I'll have charts to show all this. And then we're getting kind of far away from the 50 period moving average as me measured by the boom indicator here. We're still looking really solid in the long term with our 150 and 200 a simple moving averages. So yeah, the Fed came in, did cut rates another 25 basis points or a quarter of a percent. And the market is still figuring on having a soft landing. The dollar was up, but interest rates were down. We're down at 4.31% with the 10-year yield where we had been at 4.34%. Still higher. We're still above that 4% level and kind of and also above that 4.25% level. But at least the, the current direction of interest rates has been to come down. We're still inverted with the 10 to the three month yield curve. We're back to being normal with the 10 to the two. We're getting kind of close with the 10 to the three month. And over the weekend, I'll show that chart probably in the deep dive video, just to see we're, we're still inverted, but the line's coming up. That could change at some point pretty soon. Sentiment is still positive. We had been all the way over to negative. We just blew through being neutral and we're going and staying right now in the positive area at 61, Or after Thursday, we were at 60. And this is another change. We're starting to see a trend now. And I'll show you the chart because the green line's getting, it's going up pretty fast. But we're now positive with the ADX getting stronger. So this is suggesting a strengthening trend because we're crossing above the moving average. And with the up day, the bias is positive and our momentum is also positive. We just had consumer sentiment, which came in at 73. That's greater than the 70.6 that they had expected. And I, I saw something that this report was actually put out before the election happened. So folks were even feeling a little more optimistic even before that. And last time it came in at 70.5. So you have people feeling better about things. Here is the chart that I have here, also plotted with the two-year treasury yield, where we're coming up with the blue line. That's consumer sentiment. But we've also been going back up with interest rates as well. And they're more moving with each other here. They tend to move in the same general general direction. But this is showing some improvement along the way. We're also looking better here. When we look at the blue line, that's the total reading going up. And then the purple line, kind of flat right now. So didn't see a lot of improvement currently, maybe some apprehension about the election. But when looking out into the future, the yellow line, folks are feeling better about things. 
Then this is the cumulative change in share buybacks. Now that we're seeing less of an impact of the blackout period for companies to come in and buy their own stock, they could be coming in and that could also give support to the market here. Where we see the, the red area, this is the cumulative share buybacks, which is really looking really solid right now. And that's one of the more positive things that a company can do. It helps their books, so it makes their earnings look better, but it also makes fewer shares available out in the marketplace. And so they're supposed to be more precious. And then a company having enough confidence in its own stock to go in and buy it. And then comparing that to what the S&P has been doing, and then just measuring the overall trend in that going up. So this is another positive takeaway from the market right now. And then a split Congress tends to be best for stocks. And that's what I've been saying. If you see over here on the right-hand side, it doesn't matter which side is Republican or Democrat, but they like it when there is a split between the two. That's when the stock market does the best. And then in second place would be when it's all Republican. And then we also see positive results when there are we have both the House and the Senate are Democrat as well. I didn't include this on the seasonality chart. To me, it's this, there's too much manipulation going on here. This is the median. It's just taking like an average type price here from 1984 to 2023, and it's indexed back to 100. So it's like, okay. But kind of the takeaway here is that the market tends to do better when it's not necessarily a presidential election. But then comparing it to when we do have a presidential election, here's the dash line and then the positive seasonality, at least going through the rest of 2024. We we don't know if it's going to work out that way. And you can see even with these lines, they don't just go straight up. They're, they jag their way higher and there are periods of downturns along the way. Then U.S. equity risk premium, it's the lowest in 22 years. This is just showing this could also be more positive for the market as well. And you can see here back, this is in the great financial crisis. And then we were coming out of that. This is coming around the COVID time. And it just shows there's not a lot of risk premium in the market right now because we've been more positive. Okay, then the consensus expects the third quarter growth rate at a percent due to harder comps year-over-year -year comparisons. So this is kind of where we're at in the scheme of things, where we've been and then what we're looking at right now and then what it is looking forward. And to me, the takeaway from this is that for the most part, these charts are going up and that means earnings are improving. And then on this next chart, and I have to move this bar here, over here a little bit, post-election day for the history books. It's the strongest day after the election that the stock market has ever seen. And that's really all this chart is showing here. Okay, let me get this clicking in the right way. And then we're also seeing an increase in IPOs, initial public offerings, new companies that are being brought into the stock market so people can trade them. That's also seen as something that is positive. And we saw all kinds of this back in the mid to late 90s with the whole dot-com boom. It's like there were new companies every day. And a lot of them faded off and don't even exist anymore. But that's one of the reasons why the market was really strong at that time. It was based on fantasy, where this time it seems to be based more in reality. But the fact that this is actually going up is more positive for the market, too. I didn't really spend any time on Twitter. Yardini didn't really post any charts to look at here that I found that were worth sharing. But here is Friday's session where we were pretty flat. It looked like there were, the, the futures were slightly negative. Europe was not having a really good day. And it looked like, okay, maybe we'll just see a little bit of a drop off here. Well, that's not what happened. We saw buying coming in right off the bat. We got up to R1 and then just kind of, you, you can see these candles are not very big here. So we just kind of drifted all the way up to R2 later in the day. And that's when we got above 6,000 and we actually broke above 6,000 there for a while. But then we saw some trailing off going into the close. But we still closed above this blue moving average here. And I don't use that really heavily. It's like if we're above it, we're positive. If we're below 
it's more negative. But we did come down and that may have acted as some kind of area of support. And then intraday, we're pretty much flat right after the market opened. There's the futures that keep trading for a little while after that. But we can see here, we were actually more negative before the market opened. We saw a bit of an improvement, but we were flat right at the open. But then it was the cash session itself where we actually saw things going up. Still looking okay here, the blue line and the red line, intraday growth versus value for the large caps. They both are going up, so that's positive. We would like the blue line to be outperforming the red line. And also seeing some improvement here, even though we dropped down when we look at S&P growth to value. We have been seeing an improvement since about Halloween. And then the big up day, we did pull back a little bit with this ratio as we're seeing kind of some short-term exhaustion. But it could be the kind of exhaustion where we just kind of chop sideways, don't really see any weakness. We just see a lack of strength until the market's ready to come back in and do some more buying. But if we do start to see prices fall, as I always say, we'll evaluate that and try to determine, okay, are we actually switching more over to negative? End of day chart, growth was up, but up a lot less than value for the large caps. It was up more for the mid caps and up more for the small caps. So seeing a little bit of an improvement here with the SM, or excuse me, the small cap growth to value ratio, it's really going up and looking better. But we've seen similar things to this before only to have the hopes dashed away. Is it going to be different this time? Almost a, We're still waiting for the January effect from a year ago. Is it finally going to come, but maybe be a year late this time? But we're in, when we look at this ratio here, we're also still in a downtrend with the blue line below the red line. And also seeing an improvement with the mid caps, even though the mid caps are setting all-time highs, the growth to value ratio is still in a downtrend. And we're still looking more positive here with the large gaps, where we saw an improvement. We're in an overall uptrend with S&P growth to value. And coming up more out of the rainbow, the longer we can stay above this, the more the lines will turn and go back up and possibly smooth back out when we look at growth versus value here. And this is another encouraging area. Now, we were down with the discretionary to staples ratio a little bit on Friday, but it, overall, it is really doing quite well lately. Large cap growth, setting another new all-time high. The trend, this is where we're starting to go back up with the ADX. So we're above the moving average. The caution that we need to keep an eye on is this green line is getting kind of close up to this 40 level. And that's usually extreme when measured by this particular indicator. And we're also just about at 40 in the short term. And that's another reason for saying maybe we're due for some kind of at least sideways to slightly down action. But the market has defied that. We could go above this 40. There's nothing magical about 40. It's just when you look back at other times when we got to this level, that usually meant we at least slowed down, if not actually declined from there. And volume was still above average, but dropped off from the high values that we saw earlier in the week. And sentiment, we're coming down a bit here with the ulcer index, but we're still above the moving average. So fear is tapering, but still above average for right now. And we're continuing to decline here with the VIX, coming down into levels that we've seen for most of 2024, instead of these really high readings that we had been getting, both here with the line chart and the bar chart. And we still have this crazy really wide bar here with the VIX of the VIX but it's also dropping as the VIX has been dropping and we're just coming down here to the bottom end that means maybe the VIX might have gone down too far too fast and you can see it really dropped off just a few days ago we're we were talking about how we're above 20 now we're dropping down below 15 and for the VIX that that's a big move and it moved pretty quickly and that's why this chart is picking that up we are going down with the momentum of the VIX. And even though we haven't really updated this, this spike that we saw here was right about the beginning of November. We could see the VIX continue to go down, which would be more positive for stocks. But we're still in the lower end of this red area with the skew index. It looked like maybe we were going to drop down. Nope, not yet. We're still up in this. We could go higher up into the red area. I'll stop showing this chart if we actually drop down below the red area. So the market is still anticipating some kind of a big move. And we declined with this fair gauge, and we ticked up just a little bit here 
Well, we went down just, it's really hard to see this. We went down a little bit with this other fear gauge. So we see some confirmation there. Going back up, maybe some free weekend hedging that went on on the daily chart. We're still going down with the five-day chart. It actually ticked back up just a little bit here with the 10-day chart. So again, maybe some hedging is being placed back on over the longer term that this chart is picking up. We're seeing a real decrease here with the volatility risk premium. Had been getting very high readings. Now we're seeing that really coming down now. They're not as anticipating as much risk 30 days out into the future. Advanced decline line, even though we're setting an all-time high with the S&P, we've not set an all-time high based on price, but we have based on volume, even though we were pretty much flat in Friday's session. So volume is still looking a little bit more healthy than price, but it's price that we use to buy and sell. So we would like to see price be confirmed by that. Saw another real expansion of the new highs, even though we're still trailing sideways to down with the five day, but we're going back up with the 10 day. So internally, this is looking pretty solid too. And the boom indicator is just totally out of line here. We just cr barely crossed back above the moving average. This is the second day now that accumulation distribution went back above the red line. So we're turning more positive and the red line starting to go back up. So this for right now is positive. And with the short and intermediate term advanced decline ratio, we're also turning back positive. This is not as strong as maybe you would have thought. We actually declined a little bit with the check and money flow and the red line's going sideways. So we want to see a little bit more of an improvement here. But we are looking better with the chicken oscillator. We're above the midpoint and going up. So two of our three smart money indicators are positive, and we're a little bit concerned about the third one, the chicken money flow. We are positive here with the vortex, with the green line above the red line. And seeing an improvement here with the cumulative advanced decline line for the S&P based on price, but not setting a new high here, where we are setting a new high based on volume. Now, it's positive because volume is leading price, but eventually we want to see price match up with what volume seems to be telling us. And still looking pretty solid here when we compare the S&P to the NYSE advanced decline line. And we tick down just a little bit with the cumulative advanced decline line. And we're still going up slightly here with the NYSE advanced decline line. Also going up with this other NYSE advanced decline line, but not back to new all-time highs, at least yet. When we break it out based on common stock, we are setting highs based on volume. We still are lagging here based on price. The, depending on your perspective, you could see this as a positive divergence because volume is leading price. You could see this as a negative divergence because price is lagging volume. So it just it's where do you come out with this? Looking pretty good here with the advanced decline line study, still above the moving average and went up slightly with the NYSE common stock. A little bit of an improvement, but not back to above the previous high with the S&P. Showing a little bit more of an improvement with the mid caps and the small caps. And all are above their moving averages and their moving averages are going up. Looking pretty good here. A little bit of an improvement with those stocks above their 20 period moving averages that are inside of the S&P above 50. That's positive. Going up with the 50 day moving average study. That's positive. Going back up with the 100 day moving average study and turning back up ever so slightly with those stocks above their 200 day moving average that are in the S&P 500. So coming out, we were able to get above this dashed line here. That was a pivot point. Didn't seem to really cause much of a problem. And so far we've been able to stay above that. We did go above the moving average here based on volume, but it really dropped off from what we saw, <clears throat> excuse me, what we saw earlier in the week. This is the second day that we've seen the rate of change going back Okay, what was the close on Friday and then five days ago, five trading days? We're still looking rather extreme here. Sometimes that just meant things slowed down for a while. Other times it did mean a reversal, but we're still looking rather positive overall. Not much of an improvement, but still looking okay here with those stocks above their 20, 50, and 200-day moving averages, even though we were flat to slightly declining with the 200-day moving average. And then our short-term indicators here. The Stoke RSI is still extreme positive, as is the Williams Percent R, the CCI 14 and 20. The short-term, intermediate-term stochastics, they are extreme positive. The long-term stochastics is crossing back above the moving average and above the midpoint. So it is positive, but not extreme right now. 
And we're still getting very high readings with the force index, way above the upper band here of the Keltner band. And the condition of the short-term trend, lines are going up, prices above it. We're seeing lots of green here, still looking pretty solid there. We're above both the simple and exponential moving averages based on 20 periods. We're up into the plus three channel again here with the standard deviations chart. That could be a little extreme, but if you remember back in the summer, we rode this up for quite a while. So it can stay here. Just because we touch this doesn't mean we're going to turn and go down the other way necessarily. And we're turning more positive here with the balance of power. We were at zero. Now we're crossing back above the midpoint. The CMB composite for the second day now is still extreme positive. The condition of the 50 period moving average or trend in the intermediate term, looking a lot better with the lines starting to go back up. The go, no go has the dark blue bars. That's positive. The highest high value is looking positive. We're pegged at the blue line, which is the highest high value line. And the midpoint is going back up. TTM squeeze starting to sh ever so slightly show just a little bit of an improvement here. And we're still looking pretty high with our standard deviations chart. Again, this does not measure direction. It just measures speed. And we've come well above the moving average as the market moved quickly this past week. We're looking positive here with the ease of movement. We're above zero. The Arun declined a little bit, but still could be considered extreme positive with the oscillator here with the green line on top. The red line came back up just a little bit, which caused a slight decline with the oscillator, but the oscillator is above zero. And looking better here, we're back to positive with the S&P McClellan oscillator. We're above zero. So the summation index based on price is going up, and we've already been going up based on volume. Above zero with the NYSE McClellan oscillator. So we're turning back up with the summation index based on price and volume for the NYSE. The Swenland trading oscillator, above zero based on price and volume. That's positive. And we're turning back positive with momentum. We're crossing back above the moving average with the PMO, coming just about up to the moving average with price, actually lagging a little bit here. Now, in other charts, it shows lag that volume is doing better. This chart is showing that volume is lagging just a little bit. But we're seeing a, still an overall improvement with the PMOs that are rising. The buy signals are going up, and we're going back up with the PMOs that are above zero. And we're positive with the Elder's Impulse system with green bars. When looking at the S&P, we're positive with the parabolic SAR. The slope, this is our short-term oscillator going back above the moving average and back above the midpoint. That's positive in the short term. The MACD is positive more short to intermediate term. So in the short and intermediate term with all of our different oscillators, we are turning back to positive. We're, we're not positive with the tricks and the KST, the long-term oscillators, but they are starting to turn up. And the copy curve is now crossing over and has turned positive. The Sean trend meter is extreme positive right now. On balance volume going up above the moving average, that's positive. We're above 50 with the money flow, above 50 with the ultimate oscillator. The RSI is still looking good with the 14. That's more intermediate term where we're getting extreme positive with the RSI 9, which is short term. And even though we're coming down a little bit, we're still above this upper Bollinger Band here. And as you can see before, this usually does not last for very long. Is price going to decline? Is the Bollinger Band going to go up or a combination of the two to wear off this extreme signal? But looking at moving averages, we're just positive across the board. It will become even more positive if the red line here with the 20 crosses above the blue line. That would be the exponential moving average going above the simple moving average. And the exponential moving average moves quicker. So that would just mean that the shorter term trend is even more positive and showing some conviction. We're still far away from the 20 and 50 period moving averages here as measured by the boom indicator. And the uh, bullish percent index is now going back up. That's positive. And we're actually declined just a little bit here with the NYSE bullish percent index, but still looking positive. But we're going up and looking more positive with the NASDAQ 100 bullish percent index. And looking better here with the Ichimoku cloud, we're well above the cloud itself. What I'm focusing on here are the blue and red lines. They're going up and the green lines also going up. 
And we're looking good when we look at the different kinds of ways of measuring the trend. The hike in ASHI is positive with open candles. The Kegi chart is positive. It's black and pointing up. The Renko chart is positive with open blocks. And we're looking positive with the three-line break. And we had another new X drawn in here with the point and figure chart. We're still working off an as ascending triple top breakout that was generated back on November 8th here. So the point and figure chart is still looking quite positive. And we're looking really good here with the 150 and 200-day moving averages. And we're positive across the board with the Keller market model across all different indexes. And we're still negative with bonds in the short and intermediate term based on price. Commodities have now switched to negative in the short term and in the long term. The dollar is positive in the short and intermediate term, but still negative in the long term. An awful lot of blue here, or green, depending on what you see. Utilities, which typically is a more defensive area, it had a BPI cross below 70, and but the tech sector crossed above 70. That's a growth area. Healthcare, okay, that's more defensive, but it had a bullish MACD crossover. Dow setting an all-time high, S&P setting an all-time high, the Dow getting above 44,000, the dollar got back above 105, four-year high for the S&P and Dow, NASDAQ setting all-time high above all these different levels, a four-year high. It was just a lot of good things happened in Friday's session that started earlier in the week in response, maybe it's more of a relief that the election is finally over. Positive across the board now with the decision point scorecard, whether you use the trend model or the PMO signals on all the different time frames. And looking solid here, both the equal weight and the S&P itself are not really disconnecting from each other. Setting another new all-time high with the S&P, also setting an all-time high with the NASDAQ, setting an all-time high with the equal weight, setting an all-time high with the QQQ equal weight. The Dow setting another new all-time high and was able to get above this R2 pivot point. Positive with the Elder's Impulse System with the Diamonds. The NASDAQ setting an all-time high here above this R2 level. NASDAQ 100 setting an all-time high and above this R2 pivot point here. But it's only up 0.07%, but it was still up nonetheless. We're still positive with the Elder's Impulse System when looking at the Qs. The momentum for the NASDAQ 100 is positive. And here we go with the small caps. They were up here. We'll have to see. Are they going to give back some of these really solid gains that we've seen? Or are we going to finally see them kicking into gear? And we're still extreme when we look at the Russell 2000 small caps. It's extreme with the RSI. We're well above 70. Looking good from a chart perspective here. And the momentum is still positive for the small caps. Positive with the Elder's Impulse System for the small caps. The mid cap setting another new all-time high, looking positive here, also looking positive with the Elder's Impulse System. Wilshire 5000 setting another all-time high, broad market, also setting another broad market all-time high with the total U.S. stock ETF. Financial sector, it was up, but not necessarily at an all-time high, but still looking really solid. The FANG index was actually down a little bit after setting a new all-time high on Thursday. It did not set an all-time high on Friday. So we're coming up to this trend line, and this may be providing some overhead resistance for the FANG index. Apple was down 0.12%, still kind of battling around its 50-day moving average. Amazon was down 0.89%. See, that's why the index didn't do better. The mega caps didn't really have that great of a day with some of the companies here. Microsoft was down 0.68%, still battling around its 50 and 200-day moving averages. If you look over here, we have not seen a death cross yet with Microsoft. Google was down one and a third percent as well. Meta was down 0.4 percent. Nvidia was down 0.84 percent. That's why the the mega caps saw some profit taking on Friday. But then Tesla was up over six percent, and that really helped the discretionary sector. And we have Netflix, which is coming off of setting an all-time high. It was down slightly. And we're still seeing kind of a disconnect in the short term and even in the long term when we compare U.S. stocks to world stocks here. You can see the correlation is going down with both. Oil just kind of chopping around that 70 level for right now. The dollars, well, it didn't close above 105, but it's still looking pretty solid here. And we're going down with the 10-year yield. We're going up with the 10-year based on price. 
and we're seeing an improvement when we look at the Qs to S and P. The growth, the value ratio here. This is where we're seeing a big improvement. Discretionary to S and P, and also large cap growth is going up when compared to large cap value. So the large caps, mid caps, looking a lot better, and we are seeing an improvement with the small caps. Not much of a change here. We really shot up with the S and P to utilities ratio, but it came back down slightly in Friday's session. Um, after really dropping off, it bounced back up a little bit when we look at staples to the S and P. All right, so what's our outlook for Monday? The bond markets, on, and I have multiple because there's corporate bonds, there's government bonds. and uh, It will be closed on Monday, November 11th for Veterans Day. The stock market is open, but the bond market closes. The technicals are positive now. We're in a period of positive seasonality, but we have to ask, are we short-term overbought at this point? We're not going to have any economic reports on Monday, and we want to just keep an eye on the geopolitical things happening. Here's the economic calendar for the upcoming week. The big one is going to be Wednesday. We're going to get CPI. On Thursday, we're going to get PPI. On Friday, we're going to get retail sales as well as industrial production and capacity utilization. And here's a look at the upcoming calendar for the week. Seasonality, we're neutral to negative with the Dow, where we're flat negative with the S&P and NASDAQ. So that's not boding well for Monday's session, but it's not 100% down. So it means there are times when that day is still up. And Monday has been one of the stronger days when you compare it to 2023. It's also not as strong, but still positive so far in 2024. And we're kind of coming out of the other end of this negative time, which could include Monday session, even though that's the 11th. But then according to Tom Bally's research, we go into another few days of things being positive before it's negative and then ending the month of November looking more positive. And this is what I'm talking about with the buybacks. They're still out there, but not the huge amount that are in a blackout period right now. It's starting to trail off. And I'll keep showing this chart until we get to the end of this chart here. Once I get an updated version. Positive seasonality going forward, according to Carson. Positive seasonality once we get done with an election on this chart. Also positive after the election, according to this chart. So this is the only thing. Now, th this is kind of a concern in and of itself. People often ask me, well, do you wait for so many indicators to be positive before you turn positive? No, I actually like when there's more of a mixture of positive and negative. That's when the market tends to do the best. When everything is flashing either positive or negative, that's when I get a little bit nervous. The only thing on this list right now is a confirmed Hindenburg Omen, which doesn't seem to be relevant at this time. So then we go to the positive side and we've got a whole list of things here. We're a little bit concerned with the chicken money flow because it, it actually went sideways on an up day. But accumulation distribution is looking positive, as is the chicken oscillator. And these are our three smart money indicators. The vortex is positive, growth to value, especially for the S&P. It's improving for the mid caps and small caps. And we're seeing a big improvement with discretionary to staples. So that's turning more positive there. We're still pretty much going down with the five-day. We're kind of chopping around a little bit here with the 10-day equity put call ratio. But the advanced <clears throat> decline lines, they're looking positive because we're above the moving averages. Our 20, 50, 100, and 200-period moving average studies of those stocks inside the S&P, those are all positive again. The parabolic SAR, the Swanland Trading Oscillator, the McClellan Oscillators, and Summation Indexes for the S&P and NYSE, those are positive again. The bullish percent indexes for the S&P, NASDAQ 100, and NYC are positive. We're turning positive here with our oscillators. We already are positive in the short and intermediate term. We're waiting to see if the long-term oscillators switch back over to positive, and the Copic curve did turn positive. Ease of movement, money flow, and ultimate oscillator are positive. The financial sector is positive, and we're positive with the NASDAQ 100 momentum. So our conclusion, we are positive. And we're in a period of positive seasonality, but we have to wonder, is the market looking kind of tired here? Is it going to just chop sideways? Are we going to see some impactful selling that's actually going to turn things a little bit more negative? In the short term, we're positive and we're looking overbought at this point, but that's also good momentum. 
we're also showing good momentum in the intermediate term, but we have kind of a long list of extreme positive readings, especially like that percent B indicator that doesn't tend to last for very long. It's already lasted a couple of days. And we are still positive in the long term as well. Thank you. I hope you have a wonderful weekend and I will talk to you in the next video.